Hey everyone, I recently put out a full review on the Anchor F3800 power station and I want to answer some of the most common questions I got after that video. Question number one, what solar panels are going to work best with the dual MPPT solar charge controllers? With the 60 volt cutoff, you have to find some pretty specific panels to max these out. Question number two, since this does not come with any DC or solar charging cables, what can I purchase to make that work? Well, after a quick search online, I purchased a few options that are perfect for this power station, so I'll break these down. And lastly, question number three, can you plug any alternative power sources into these DC charging ports to keep the 240 volt output enabled? Now, if you remember from my video, whenever you AC charge the power station, it shuts off the 240 volt output. The way around that is to plug in DC power sources because it stays enabled. Now what if you have some sort of 48 volt battery charger or some sort of AC to DC converter? Can you plug those in and still charge the power station with 240 volt output? We'll be testing that. Now before we can pick out specific solar panels for this power station, I wanna recap the solar input parameters. Now we have two male XT60 ports. Each one is good for 1200 watts or combined 2400 watts. Now the most important part to pay attention to are these two voltage parameters. For example, if your solar panel puts out peak power between 11 to 32 volts, you're gonna be limited to 10 amps on each port, which is really low. If you want the max input, you have to have your solar panels put out peak power around 32 all the way up to 60 volts, and then you get the full 25 amps. So when we're looking at solar panels for the F3800, we wanna pay attention to two key specifications on the tech sheet of the solar panel. Number one is the VOC or the voltage open circuit. This is usually the highest voltage that you'll see from the solar panel. And keep in mind, it goes a little bit higher than stated if it's really cold outside. So you wanna give yourself a little bit of leeway here. Number two is the voltage max power. This number kind of tells you which voltage that you'll see as your solar panels are putting out peak power. Now, how does that apply to the F3800? Well, we need a voltage open circuit under 60 volts and we need a voltage max power over 32 volts, so let's see what's available online. Now, one of the better websites where you can look at a bunch of different solar panels and their specs is actually Signature Solar's website. You can see they have so many different panels. They have pages and pages of them. And one of the coolest things about this website is you can sort the panels by their VOC. If you click the Show More option, it will list all the panels and their VOC. And to get the most power, we wanna choose the highest option. So let's go ahead and look at a few of these options. So option number one is this Q-Cells 475 watt bifacial solar panel. It's currently priced at $239. Now you'll notice that you have to purchase 10 of these minimum. So if you did wanna purchase these, you could sell the extras locally. Now if you look at the VOC, it's 53.15. We have a short circuit current of 11.08 amps. Let's go ahead and look at the spec sheet. Now, if we come down here on the spec sheet, we can zoom in on it. We're gonna look at the 475 watt model and you can see the voltage at max power is 45.03 volts. So if we times this by 25, this gives us over 1100 watts per port. So we could almost max out the charging input if you have three of these solar panels connected in parallel. So you'd have three on one port in parallel, three on another port in parallel, giving you almost 2,400 watts. Now the next solar panel that will work well on the F3800 is this Blue Sun 460 watt bifacial solar panel. You can see these are a little bit cheaper at $207 each. And they have a VOC a little bit lower at 50.8 volts. Let's look at the spec sheet. Now if we come down here and zoom in a bit, you can see the 460 model right here. And we're looking for the voltage at max power, which is 42.4 volts. So if we put these in parallel in a set of three, we can max out the 25 amp input limit and get a little bit over 1050 watts. So you can see a little bit less voltage, we're gonna get a little bit less power, but these panels are more affordable. So you'll have to do a trade-off of what panel you wanna go with. Now what about a solar panel that's a little bit smaller and much cheaper? This Hyundai 395 watt bifacial panel is nearly half the cost of the others that we looked at so far at $120 each. And looking at the VOC, it's still pretty respectable at 48.8 volts. Looking at the spec sheet, we can come down here and zoom in. So the 395 watt model specs are right here. And looking at the voltage max power, is 40.5 volts. So if we have three of these panels, we put them in parallel, 
we are going to get the full 25 amps times 40.5. That's a little bit over 1000 watts. So just a little bit less power, but these are quite a bit more affordable versus the other two models that we found. Now, I also wanted to give you guys an example of a solar panel that will not work well with the F3800. This is the Canadian solar 400 watt panel. Now be aware there are a lot of 400 watt panels with similar specs. For example, the VOC is much lower, only at 36.8 volts. That means the operating voltage is also going to be lower. Looking at the spec sheet, we can come down here and actually check. So the 400 watt option, you can see the optimal operating voltage or the voltage max power is 30.8 volts. On the F3800, if you have under 32 volts, it will limit it to 10 amps. So if you put a bunch of these in parallel, you are gonna be limited to 10 amps only or around 308 watts. So just be aware, a lot of solar panels are like this. So you need to check the specs before you go out and purchase solar panels for your power station. So with those few examples, hopefully now you understand which panels to look for and which panels to avoid. Now be aware, a lot of people will buy a whole pallet of these and then sell them locally. I put out a video a couple weeks ago talking about this process. So if you look locally on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist, you can find these panels on the cheap. You won't have to pay for shipping. You can pick them up locally. So check out that video. I'll include that down in the video description about the secret to finding these panels on the cheap locally. Now you can also use these smaller format solar panels. You don't have to use the large ones. I just recommend those because they are so affordable right now. So right here, these are the Renogy 200 watt flex panels. I get really good power out of these. I tested four of these in a 2S 2P configuration on the Anchor F3800 and I got around 760 watts. So just barely under the rated output. If you wanted to max it out, you could have six of these in a 2S 3P configuration. You're gonna see around 40 volts at peak power, meaning that you're gonna get around 1000 watts per charge controller and you'd have to have 12 of these panels. So. These are a little bit more expensive, but you can definitely use the smaller format solar panels like these, or you can use the larger format solar panels. You can use whatever works for your specific use case. So if you're a beginner interested in learning more, I have a full beginner's guide of how to choose the right solar panel for your power station. I'll include that video down in the video description. Now on this one, the key things to remember is that you do not want your voltage open circuit going over 60 volts, and you want your voltage max power above 32 volts, and you'll be good. Now, because the Anchor F3800 does not come with DC input charging cables, I've had a lot of people request that I find something that they can just purchase right off the shelf because they aren't comfortable making their own cables. So I found a bunch of different options that will help you connect to solar panels and to a 48 volt server rack battery. The first option that you need is this cable here, XT60 female to Anderson power pole. This is a 10 gauge wire. Let me explain why you need that. Each one of these ports is good for 25 amps continuous. That is too much power for 12 gauge wire, so you have to step it up to 10 gauge wire. So this adapter right here allows you to plug into this, and then you have Anderson power pole to attach to other adapters. For example, if you want to connect to solar panels, you can have this Anderson power pole to MC4, and this allows you to connect right into your solar extension wires. Now, if you are gonna be having a long run of solar between the power station and your solar array, I would recommend going in with a larger gauge wire. For example, eight gauge wire, you're gonna get less voltage drop, it can handle more amps. And so I would recommend using eight gauge wire on a long extension cable between this and your solar panels. Now you also want to have a fuse on each one of your solar panels because they'll be connected in parallel. Now if you wanna connect up to a 48 volt server rack battery, this is a really good adapter here. So this has Anderson power pole to ring terminals. So this allows you to connect to the 48 volt server rack battery and this has built in fuses. So it's really nice to have those. So each of these just plugs straight in, very easy to connect up. So you have an option for connecting to a server rack battery. You have an option to connect to solar panels and you can also make your own adapters. So I'll have all the links to those down in the video description. In the final section of the video, we'll be testing a few alternate charging options for the F3800. For example, right here, I have a 48 volt LFP battery AC wall charger. I also have a high powered BK Precision DC power supply. And then I'll also do a couple demos with the EG4 48 volt server rack battery, all plugged into the XT60 ports so we can leave the 240 volt output enabled. Now in the first test, I have the 48 volt battery charger connected up to the F3800 XT60 port. 
And if you look closer here, you can see a red and green flashing alarm, meaning it's not recognizing the battery voltage that it's connected to. So here on the screen, you can see it's not charging. We don't have any watts going in, but I do have the charger connected in over on the XT60 port. So unfortunately, it will not charge because it doesn't have some sort of battery voltage that it can work with. The next alternative charging option that I wanna show you guys is this AC to DC power converter. Now on the back here, I have it connected to an AC wall outlet, so it's getting AC power, and then it's converting that over to DC power connected into the power station. Right here, I have it set to 53 volts at two amps, so we're charging right above 100 watts on the power station. Now this is a high powered option, I have the ability to turn this all the way up to 1200 watts if I wanted, but there are many different options available when you're looking at AC to DC power converters. Now the main benefit of using an AC to DC converter to charge the power station through the DC port is that you get the 240 volt output on the inverter versus when it gets disabled when you AC charge. So if you really need to charge at the power station and solar is not available and you wanna have the 240 volt output on the inverter, this is a good alternative option. You're taking AC power, turning it into DC power, and charging via the XT60 port. Now the last charging alternative that I wanna mention in this video is using one of these 48 volt server rack batteries to charge the F3800. Now using this type of setup kind of gets rid of all the little quirks that you have with this unit. Remember the 60 volt solar cutoff? No, you won't have that issue if you charge with a different solar charge controller on that battery. Also, you can't charge this with AC input and have the 240 volt output enabled. So if you have an AC charger like this connected to this battery, you can charge this with AC input and then you can DC dump power into this and you can have the 240 volt inverter enabled. So using one of these not only gives you a longer runtime because the massive amount of power that this battery has, but it also gets rid of the other quirks with the F3800. Now when we have that EG4 battery connected up, you can see we're maxing out the charging input at 1150 watts, and that's only with one of these connected. Now in my full review video, I did try connecting up one battery to both charging ports, but it does not like the common ground. So you will have to have two separate 48 volt batteries if you want to dual charge the power station. Now most of the time, the consistent load of the power stations that I use is under 1200 watts. So even with one of these charging ports, you should be able to continually run your loads in a backup scenario. But if you really needed the dual charging capability, you'd have to pick up two of these batteries and they would have to be separate. You cannot put them in parallel. But with two of those batteries, you'd be extending the runtime on this power station significantly with basically 10 kilowatt hours of additional capacity. Now connecting the F3800 up to a server rack battery is really easy. Just use the adapter that I showed earlier in the video. You have your main positive, your main negative, you have a built-in fuse and the Anderson charging cable and it all connects right up. Now obviously you don't have to go with a specific EG4 battery to do this. You can choose any brand and it doesn't even have to be a server rack battery. It just has to be a 48 volt battery so that you can get the full charging input per each of these charging ports. Now I chose this particular battery from EG4 because the USB support and warranty and also their battery here, the LL, has this upgraded screen that gives you the state of charge, the power going in and out, and it also um, shows you a bunch of other information, which is really useful. I really like this battery. But any battery that you went with would give you the same perks uh, or upgrades with the F3800. Now one thing to think about, instead of purchasing an expansion battery from Anchor, you could purchase one of these save a little bit of money, get all the upgrades that I've talked about, you know, charge it with solar, any voltage that you want with your charge controller. You can charge it with AC input. So lots of perks to upgrading to one of these, including expanding the runtime. Now those were the three main questions that I got about this power station after I finished the full review video. And they were a bit complicated, so I thought it'd be helpful to make this dedicated video covering that topic. So if you guys were interested in picking this up or you already own this, please smash the thumbs up button if you found this content helpful. Now, if you are looking for a little bit more advice or consulting, I am available through a new service called Ask Me. I'll include a link to it down in the video description, but for a small fee, you can get in direct contact with me and I can give you guys some advice and consulting based on solar panels, batteries, or power stations. So new service if you guys are interested in that. Now, hopefully you guys liked the video. If you did, please share it with your friends or family. Now, I'll recommend a few other videos that you guys can check out based on solar panels with parallel and series connections or even how to find the right solar panel for your power station if you have a different model. Thanks for watching. 
Hopefully we'll see you guys in the next video.